So the respiratory system, the respiratory system, you can see some of these pictures. Well, as, you, as we go through this, you may want to jump back and look at some of these pictures later to get a better understanding. Um, you may understand it a little bit better then. All right, so the main purpose, the main purpose is it gives oxygen to the blood and it takes CO2 from the blood. So it's giving oxygen to the blood and it's taking CO2 from the blood. So we talked about this a little bit with the circulatory system that oxygen has to get to the cells and CO2 has to get out of the cells. And we talked about how the body system does that or how the uh, circulatory system does that like in your foot or something. But as it's heading back, it goes um, back to the heart and the heart pumps it, that blood that doesn't have very much oxygen in it and has a lot of what? Has very little oxygen and has a lot of what? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. And that gets pumped to the lungs, back to the lungs, where what's called gas exchange. Gas exchange or gaseous exchange happens. And it switches out the carbon. In the same way that it did it down there in the foot, it does the same thing but opposite. As the blood vessels, uh, really, really, really tiny blood vessels, um, get as the blood vessels... Uh, get close to your lungs, your lungs have a lot of air in them from breathing in. There's a lot of air in your lungs, a lot of oxygen in your lungs, and oxygen jumps from your lungs into your bloodstream, and that carbon dioxide, there's a bunch of it in that blood and very little of it in your lungs, so it jumps ship and goes into the lungs, most of it, or a lot of it. And then when you breathe out, it goes back up your trachea. We'll talk about that path in just a second. But that's the purpose. The purpose is it gives O2 to the blood, and take CO2 from the blood. I'm going to write that down in just a sec. Uh, actually, go ahead and write that down now. All right. So now the main organs. Talk about these main organs. The first thing that it comes to, the first thing, if you think through what you're breathing in, you can breathe in your mouth. We're just going to say nose. Um, so it's a little bit different from the digestive system. We're going to say nose. So your nose, everybody breathe in. If you breathe in on a cold day like that, what happens sometimes? You can feel it being cold, right? So your nose, one of its jobs is to filter the air as it comes in. So you think about boogers. Your, your boogers are filtering out. Like if you're, if you, if who's ever worked outside a lot, like maybe cutting grass or um, doing stuff outside, and then later that night, your boogers are like dirt. They look like dirt. Y'all you know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all who pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. But your, your snot, your boogers are going to be like dirt, very dark, because you've been breathing in a bunch of dirt in your body, your um, your nose, the, all those little hairs in your nose are a filter, kind of like the air filter in your house. It's going to stop all that stuff from getting into the important part, which is inside of uh, the, the next couple steps. And so um, a nose both filters air, and it's also warming it up. Um, your nose tends to get cold, and it's better for your nose to be cold than your lungs to be cold. Think about it, if you're cold outside, is it better that your inner body where your chest, like your lungs and your heart, is it better that that's cold or your nose is cold? Yeah. Your nose. So your nose sacrifices itself and it warms that up just a little bit before it actually enters into um, your body. We'll do this next one. Trachea. So I'll, I'll, we'll, do, we'll try to do two at a time. Your trachea. Have you ever heard of that word before? Yeah. Uh, that is the thing. So if you've ever looked behind your dryer, you've probably noticed a, uh, the little, it's like a metal tube. But it's got a spiral going around. It looks like it's, it's a tube that has ribs, essentially, is what it looks like. Um, what's that? Right, yeah, it's kind of, it goes from the dryer to the wall. Um, that similar feeling is what you feel. If you'll feel your neck, you have a tube that goes from your mouth down to your lungs that connects it. Um, and that, that thing is called a trache, uh, trachea. You may have seen in TV shows where it's the tracheotomy, somebody's choking, and they'll actually take a knife and they'll cut the trachea very carefully. They'll cut the trachea and they'll put a little, I've seen on TV shows where somebody like, you know, MacGyver or somebody that's really good at uh, making use of what's around, they'll take a pin and they'll actually put a, pin, a hollow, the hollow tube of a pin and stick it there. Because when you're choking, the food is not killing you, it's the lack of air that's killing you, um, which the food is causing. So if you can get around that, so if there was something up high in your throat that's blocking your airway, putting a cut down there lower in your throat or the trachea or in your trachea um, and making a tube to where you're actually breathing through that tube. Does that make sense? Instead of breathing through your nose or your mouth, the hole in your face um, up there is actually a hole in your throat that air is going into and out of. So you'd be breathing through that tube. Um, that's called a tracheotomy. 
But your trachea is that windpipe. Some people have call it a windpipe. Um, it, air flows through here and into the lungs, and it looks like a dryer hose. Um, let's see if there's a picture. There you go. Um, you see how there's little lines all, it's like it's got a bunch of stripes. Um, this part would be called your trachea. I right, so go ahead and write about your nose and your trachea and what they do and how they, now again, remember the purpose of this. How does the nose help the respiratory system get oxygen to the blood and CO2 out of the blood? How does the trachea get oxygen to the blood and CO2 from the blood? All right. So we've got the nose and the trachea, so that the air, oxygen, remember oxygen is the goal is to get it in your blood, so getting the air through your nose, down your trachea, where's the next thing, y'all know? What is the larynx? Y'all know what the next thing is? Larynx. We'll get to the, no, the larynx is above, the it's already past larynx. The so there's, there's parts of this that we're not going to talk about, and that's okay, we're just doing a very general overview. Um, so, bronchi. Everybody say bronchitis. Bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Right? All right, so the bronchi tubes, itis in, in medical stuff, um, if you'll learn the prefixes and suffixes of stuff, you'll understand better what the doctor is explaining that you have. So, itis just means that, uh, that something is inflamed or infected. So, bronchitis means your bronchi tube. So, you have your trachea. That's the big red. If you look at this kind of like a tree, upside down tree, right? This is the trunk. The first main branches, the big branches like that you could climb on um, uh, are going to be right here. It's where they split off the bronchi, the bigger um, the bigger things. If you continue going, we're not going to talk about these, but they're called the bronchioles. They're, they're going to get smaller and smaller, just like a, a leaf. Is a, does a leaf grow on the trunk of a tree? No, no normally not. Sometimes in weird situations they might, but in most of the time they're going to grow on a very small, thin branch, right? One that you can break with like one finger by flicking it. Um, in the same way, the air, all this trachea is doing is getting the oxygen to the next thing we're going to talk about, um, I think, is called the alveoli. And that is the, imagine that Michael Jordan is playing on your basketball team. Imagine you are, go and shut your, tilt your computers. Imagine Michael Jordan is on your middle school basketball team. He's a pro player, like let's just say it was from 15 years ago. He's a pro player. He is on your team. What is the goal of your team going to be? Get the ball to Jordan. Like, we don't care about how well you can dribble. You just, if you got to throw it down court, like he's, he's big enough, he can get it. Get the ball to Michael. You get him the ball. And that is the whole goal of the respiratory system. In this case, the respiratory system is um, your team and the alveoli, the things that are the very end we're about to talk about. Those things are Michael Jordan. Get the oxygen to the alveoli. That's what you got to do to win this game, to keep us alive. We've got to get there. So the nose, the trachea, the bronchi, all of them are just tubes of ways of getting the oxygen to what? Alveoli. alveoli. Not ravioli, alveoli. It's alveoli. So the bronchi, they're the small tube. So the trachea is the trunk of that tree that's upside down. The bronchi, um, or the bronchi, I don't know how you would say it in, in Latin, um, but they're going to be the smaller tubes. So big tube, looks like a, a dryer hose, then the bronchi. And the next one is the alveoli. Everybody say alveoli. Alveoli. So the alveoli are these air sacs that move oxygen into the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood. If you'll notice down here, this is a, a, an animated or a, a digital version, digital picture of it. If you'll notice, these little air sacs. The reason, your lungs, when I imagine my lungs, when I used to imagine my lungs, I would imagine my lungs as like a balloon that just fills up. And the edges of the balloon is where the oxygen went into my blood. But that's not how that works. That would be really, 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 really inefficient. It would not work well. So what happens is your, um, like up here, the trachea splits off into the what? Nope. Bronchi. And it continues splitting just like a tree. Just like a tree, it continues splitting more and more and more and more until a tree that may have, that, I mean, a tree that may be five feet thick, like straight five feet through the trunk, on the ends of that tree are going to be very, 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 very thin branches with a leaf or a needle or something on it, some kind of leaf. Um, and in the same way, these alveoli are extremely tiny. You don't look and see an alveoli sac. Um, this is really, really zoomed in. Um, not to the cell level, of course. What would this be considered, do you think? Was this tissue. a cell? Tissue. 
I think this would be considered, this section right here would be considered an, um, an organ because you've got some tissue that is going to be letting the oxygen through. And if you consider the blood part of there as well, the, bl the blood vessels, the blood vessels are pulling the oxygen or getting rid of carbon dioxide. So in this picture, what kind of blood is on this red? What does the red blood represent? Oxygen. Oxygenated blood, and it comes over here. I'm sorry. It's going the other way. This blue is, is carrying deoxygenated blood full of carbon dioxide, comes over here, drops off the carbon dioxide. As it's moving, it's also picking up oxygen and bringing it back to the heart so that your heart can pump it down to the rest of your body. In the case, we've been using the toe. So alveoli, is, how important is it from 1 to 10? 10. 10. 10, 11. Yes, it is extremely important. If it's not there, the rest of these are useless. So go ahead and uh, write those down. All right. Then we get to the lung. So the bronchi and the alveoli, we're going to say that they are in the lung. So the lungs is a large group of all of these things that are happening. So um, it includes the alveoli and all the different things that are there. It includes the bronchi tubes, which are all there. The lungs are an organ. Um, I would have to talk to somebody that's smarter than me or just look online pretty easily probably to see if this would be considered an organ because it has different tissue types. Maybe it's all the same tissue type and they can just do a lot of different things. Uh, but the lungs, are the lungs an organ? Yes. Yes, the lungs are definitely an organ. It is the most important organ of the respiratory system. Why is it so important? What does it have in it that is extremely important? Oxygen. Nope. Because the air has oxygen. That's not an organ that's important. Why does... Listen to me. Why are the lungs so important? Why? Why is your basketball team so important? Because you have Michael Jordan. Because it has Michael Jordan. So why are the lungs so important and so helpful? Because they have... They, Michael Jordan is not in your lungs. What is that Michael Jordan of your respiratory system? The alveoli. The lungs are so important because they have the alveoli. The reason that they're important, the reason that the entire respiratory system is important is because it has the alveoli. When we talk about what the respiratory system does, what is the purpose of the respiratory system? Do you remember? What is it? To get blood, I mean to get oxygen to the blood. Get oxygen to the blood and get CO2 from the blood. Guys, literally the alveoli is doing the purpose of the respiratory system. Everything else is just getting the oxygen to the alveoli. Do y'all see that? That's all that's going on. The alveoli get the oxygen and get the carbon dioxide and do what they're going to do. The rest of the team just gets the oxygen and carbon dioxide to them. It is the Michael Jordan of that team. Get the ball to Jordan. Get the air whether it's oxygen or carbon dioxide, to the alveoli, and it will get rid of it. And then the rest of them, they do have a role to play. Now, if you didn't have a trachea, could the alveoli get the air? No. If you didn't have the bronchi tubes or the bronchi or your nose, could the oxygen get to your alveoli? No. So they're extremely important. Extremely important. But they're only important because of what the alveoli does. The MVP of the team is the alveoli, definitely. So some of these uh, pictures on the side you can look at later. Um, what is the diaphragm? Anybody know what the diaphragm is? Any ideas? The diaphragm is a muscle. The diaphragm, everybody breathe in. That Your diaphragm is that muscle, and it's right here up under your rib cage. You can see it in this picture. Um, you can see this right here. Do you see it? The, the diaphragm is the muscle that makes your chest expand or contract and that's what allows you to breathe if you've ever um had the hiccups i believe and i've not ever looked this up but this is what just makes sense to me and please i'll give you candy if you show me that i'm wrong but your diaphragm is what is spat have you ever had a spasm in your eye or your arm or something like your muscle just keeps twitching when your diaphragm twitches it's making you it's making that um uh, uh hiccup it's hiccuping um, and so your, that's what your diaphragm is doing. Your diaphragm is the thing that makes your lungs expand. Um, so we made this little thing out of a Gatorade lid and some balloons. Um, and we're going to work on this and make it a little bit better, but watch. The yellow thing is your diaphragm, and the green balloon is, uh, are your lungs. Can your lungs make your chest expand all by themselves? No, all they are is just a sack of air, a bunch of alveoli. But when your diaphragm moves down... 
Do y'all see it getting larger and squeezing? I don't know if y'all can see that. When your diaphragm moves, and we need to get a bigger balloon, um, tried making this yesterday, and then the balloon ended up tearing. Um, but what, what's happening is your diaphragm moves down, and your lungs expand to it, and your diaphragm moves up, and it squeezes together. So your diaphragm moving is what makes your lungs expand or contract, and that's what's getting the air into there or out of there. Um, and there's tons of videos you can look at. I think I listed some on your notes slideshow. Um, yeah, so the diaphragm is a muscle that controls the expansion and contraction of your lungs. So the diaphragm is extremely important. Without the diaphragm, no air gets into the alveoli. But again, the alveoli is Michael Jordan. All right, go ahead and write it down. All right, so no, the air enters your nose, goes down your trachea into your alveoli. Um, I'm sorry, into your trachea through your bronchial tubes, which are those large branches of the tree if it was upside down. And then it's into the alveoli. Your alveoli are found inside of your lungs. That's why your lungs are so important. Um, and your diaphragm is what makes or allows your lungs to expand or pushes them to squeeze them to get all the air out. Uh, diaphragm is spelled like diaphragm. It looks like diaphragm. I may call it that sometimes just to be silly. All right, again, here's another picture. What, is, what are these things right here? Uh, alveoli. alveoli. They're the Michael Jordan. So you have uh, blood coming in that does not have oxygen. I mean, it does have a lot of CO2, and it drops off the CO2, picks up oxygen as it leaves, and takes us back to the heart. And you don't have to know all the other all the different parts. You just need to know that alveoli are going to have blood all around them, blood vessels all around them. Because the whole purpose of the respiratory system, what is its job? To descend blood to the to get oxygen to get oxygen into the blood and to take what from the blood? CO2. CO2. So this is similar to a video that we watched before. Um, it's sending the heart. The heart is getting the blood, the deoxygenated blood. It sends it to the lungs. The lungs, as it's going through past the the uh, through the alveoli, it picks up oxygen, goes back to the heart, gets pumped out to your toe that we've been talking about, and then it comes back deoxygenated again, and it starts over. Every time your heart beats, this happens. Every time you breathe, this is happening. These two body systems are working extremely close together, extremely close together. All right. Diffusion. We've talked about diffusion. We talked about how and here's a, an animated version of the really pretty drawings I've been drawing. So the blood comes by. It does not have oxygen. Has what? What does it have in it? CO2. CO2 drops the CO2. The oxygen that's there's a bunch of it in here in the air. It jumps over into the blood, and the blood is moving as it's happening. Um, I'll go ahead and read this. It says as blood cells get near the capillaries. I'm sorry. Yeah, get near the capillaries from the arteries. Um, in veins, the high amounts of CO2 diffuse into the lungs where there's low amounts of CO2. The blood has very little oxygen and some oxygen diffuses into the blood as it passes. Does this require any energy? Yes. No. Explain why or why not. Who says yes? You want to say why yes? Okay, why do you say no then? Somebody says no. Why do you say no? Because like Don't talk about your body. Talk about what we talked about when we said um, act, uh, active and passive transport. Um, Remember? Active your so active transport is when you have to use energy. Your cells have to burn energy. Is this burning? Why is the oxygen, carbon dioxide moving? Why is the carbon dioxide moving from the blood into the heart? I mean, into the lungs? To maintain equilibrium. Equilibrium, yes. And, so, and why is the oxygen going from the lungs into the blood. Is it being pushed into the blood? No. Is it being forced? Is your body using energy? No. no. Why? Equilibrium. E to maintain equilibrium. So not all the oxygen leaves. That's why when you breathe out, if you ever have to give somebody CPR, you're breathing into their mouth twice. You do 30 compressions. You squeeze, you push their chest 30 times, and then you breathe into their mouth two times. If you've been trained to do that, that's what you do. Um, and you're blowing air into their lungs. Now, that air that, air that you're blowing into their lungs does not have... 21% oxygen like we talked about yesterday, but it's going to have some oxygen in it, and that's going to be better than the oxygen that's been sitting in that person's lungs 
uh, for the last 30 compressions. So there's some videos there. Um, Dr. Binox, I know y'all love him. Kids Health, How Your Lungs Work, Respiratory System, y'all can click on those later. Um, here's another thing you can look at how the diaphragm helps, um, helps your lungs expand and contract. And then we'll start muscular system tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday.